It is a beautiful day in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where the crowds are starting to pour into Bank OZK Arena for today's 6A girls basketball game between North Little Rock and Fort Smith Northside. RJ Hawk and Bobby Swavert here getting you ready for this evening's game. Michael Westbrook and Westmore will have the call of tonight's game, Bobby. But earlier today, you and I got to see some great basketball and 5A action, and we'll start with the girls' action. Yeah, Greenwood taking on Jonesboro, two of the best teams in Class 5A really over the last decade. And this one played out a little slower to start for Jonesboro than they would have liked. They missed their first eight threes. They couldn't get anything to go from the outside. Greenwood jumped out to an early 15-8 lead and kind of held Jonesboro at arm's length for most of the contest, and they did it with their star player, Madison Cartwright, not scoring until the fourth quarter, but they got enough production from everybody else, including Anna Trusty, who went 7-11 of 11 from the field as a sophomore, finished with 24 points, and Greenwood made just enough plays, got just enough stops in the second half to prevent a comeback and they held off Jonesboro 60 to 49 for the sixth state championship for Clay Reeves at Greenwood and his ninth overall as a head coach. And you know the score is not indicative of how well that game was played because Jonesboro made a little bit of a run there in the second half and and cut it within two points and in the end the defense and the shooting ability of Greenwood just overdid them. Yeah Ariana Hardaway just really willed Jonesboro back into the contest. Greenwood led by as much as 10 but she knocked down five three-pointers finished with 22 points but you're exactly right Greenwood made just enough plays and just enough free throws to be able to will Greenwood to that championship. And a lot of the players, most of the starting five for Greenwood, they're coming back. So expect the Lady Bulldogs to make another run next year. Let's move on to boys action real quick in Class 5A. Jonesboro just routed Marion in that one. 55-28 final score, and it was Keon Williams for Jonesboro, who is their do-it-all guy going to Oklahoma State and had a big game. Yeah, when you when you look at the guys' matchup, it was really the first two possessions of the game. Jonesboro controlled the opening tip, got a wide open layup, and then you see the steal there and the wide open runaway dunk. It's 4-0 before Marion's fans even got a chance to find their seat, and the Golden Hurricane really ran away with it and posted a 55-28 victory, and they walked to another state title. Well, we are moments away from tonight's 6-8 girls game. When we come back, Michael Westbrook and Westmore will have the call inside Bank OZK Arena as you're watching the Centennial Bank High School Basketball State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Fasten your seatbelt. I'm descended from mystery. I didn't know what we were. We're going to find out. Vintage Hot Springs. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Nara, Dutch Schultz starts making an unbelievable amount of money. And that money is said to be buried in upstate New York. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're going to get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Welcome inside Bank OZK Arena for the Class 6A State Championship game between Fort Smith Northside and North Little Rock. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore. It's going to be a huge game between two teams who are familiar with each other from the regular season. Oh, these are conference foes in that 6A Central. They play each other twice a year. North Little Rock beat Northside twice this season. So you would think North Little Rock, number two in the state, pretty much all year. They'd be the favorite team. Well, we, we talked with North Little Rock's coach earlier this week. Coach Fimple said no. There are no favorites in a championship game. Both teams are playing great to be here. And Coach Fimple pointed out, Ricky Smith over there, 
That's a heck of a coach. Don't call him an underdog. Veteran coach for sure. Let's look at some players to watch in this one, starting first with the North Little Rock Lady Charging Wildcats. Amari Williams, she's six foot three, a senior forward. She is the key to the North Little Rock success this year, 15 points a game. There you see her, number 32, 11 rebounds a game, 93 blocks. She is going to Vanderbilt. That's an SEC player right there. Yanni Relliford on the other side for Northside, also a senior, 5'10", forward, averages nearly 14 points a game. Also number 32, so pretty easy for you tonight, guys and ladies. Watch number 32. We are underway in the 6A Girls State Championship game. North Little Rock in the white uniforms. North side in the red in the opening possession for the Lady Charging Wildcats. Starts with a turnover. Yeah, Tate was looking inside, trying to get the ball inside, I'm, I'm guessing, to Amari, and kind of got it knocked loose and out of control. Goes out of bounds, so North side gets a turnover on their first defensive possession. Now they'll try to score first. So the starting lineup for North side, number one, Garen Freeman, number four, Jocelyn Tate. Number 15, April Edwards. Number 24, Destiny Duckworth. And number 32, Amari Williams. That's for Northside. And for Fort Smith, number 11, Asia Harris. Number 22, Ariana Gooden. Number 24, Zoe Brashears. Number 33, Cassidy War. And we already mentioned Relliford as Northside starts with the game's first points. Brashears, only a freshman, and that name should sound familiar to high school girls basketball fans in the state of Arkansas. She's had two pretty good sisters that came before her at Northside. Tracy was one of them, played in the game last year. Offensive board, put back no good from Duckworth. Two possessions and nothing so far for North, for North Little Rock. North Little Rock girls crashing the boards. They're doing a good job of getting offensive rebounds, but they're unable to capitalize and make points. Harris hit the game's first shot, misses that one, an offensive rebound. Long shot here, and off the iron. Zoe, Bers Zoe Brashears with the shot. I thought North Little Rock did a great job of blocking out and getting the second rebound. We got a foul called on that. That drive from the little general, as Coach Fimple calls her. Free goes to the basket. Now Free will go to the free throw line. Garen Freeman averaging four points and 2.7 rebounds a game, but she does control the tempo for North Little Rock. Foul on Bershears, her first game's first foul. Our officials, Lauren Thomas, Herb Burrell, and James Bickman. North Little Rock needs to see the ball go through the cylinder, through the bottom of the net. It's like there's a lid on that thing right now. And Freeman, one of two, so she does have that first point for North Little Rock. That'll relax the team a lot. Just getting that first basket helps so much. You get out here and run up and down the court a couple times. Now the nerves are starting to go away. Doesn't matter how many times these teams have been in the state championship game, how much experience they have in big game situations. It's always tough starting starting a game out. Referee stop play there for a moment. Northside's Cassidy Ward. Eight points a game, five rebounds a game. Gives it to Gooden. Gooden off of a screen. Down the edge of the paint, kicks it out. Northside will start over here. War swings it back over to Gooden. Ariana Gooden, 10 points a game this season. And ball poked free. North Little Rock comes up with it. It's Duckworth, no numbers. And she'll wisely back it out and give it to Freeman. Now a three on its way. Missed it short from April Edwards. Offensive board. Going up strong, high off the glass. Duckworth misses. We've got another foul in the paint. Mari Williams did a great job staying with it. She saw her teammate get the first offensive rebound. She, I was watching her. She was trying to position herself for the second offensive rebound. She just used her size, her length, to reach over and get that rebound. And as she was trying to shoot it, the north side girls were so focused on blocking her out so she didn't get another rebound. It really undercut her when she tried to shoot the ball. Saw Ricky Smith a moment ago, talked about him in the open, his north side program as a whole has won eight state championships. They were the champions a year ago. Amari's listed 6'3", and she's ever been of 6'3". I'm 6'4", and I'll tell you what, she, she is that tall. She's a superstar, that's for sure. Offensive foul. 
And there's Garen Freeman standing in to take a charge. Coach told us she does that. 22 charges this year that she has taken. That one an call for the illegal screen, but it works basically the same way. Yeah, and Razorback fans will remember her father, Allie Freeman, and uh, G Free, as they like to call her sometimes, man. She's not afraid of going all Jalen Williams and drawing a charge. A three is in from Edwards. North Little Rock started slowly. Now they lead six to two, nearly three minutes into the first quarter, and a steal. It's Destiny Duckworth. Goes right at the rim and hits the basket, plus a blocking foul and one opportunity coming. Northside was trying to take a charge. That was war, and I think she was under the basket. She got too deep trying to take that charge, and the officials called the lock, late blocking foul. North Little Rock's on this run. It's all because of turnovers. All of a sudden, here's a look at the replay, and you can see she's underneath the basket when she tries to draw that charge. But that's three turnovers for Northside, and I think it's the last three possessions. Now eight to two, North Little Rock. It's a young team for Northside. A lot of freshmen seeing some big minutes. Four new starters this year. As you said, some nerves early on for them. War trying to drive, cut off. Nice pass underneath to Brashear. She cannot handle it cleanly. North Little Rock out hustling right now. And a timeout for North Little Rock. Good job by Coach Fipple. He saw his player get the loose ball. She was about to be tied up. They were going to call a jump ball, but he decided to use one of his timeouts, and uh, North Little Rock will have possession, so another turnover for Northside. That's their fourth turnover of the game. North Little Rock is really capitalizing on that. That's a 9-0 run. Don't forget, Northside scored the first two points of the game, and that's nine straight points for North Little Rock, and Northside four turnovers in the last two minutes and 59 seconds. Northside had to play three games at the state tournament to get here. They defeated Bentonville West and then Bentonville and then a win over Central for North Little Rock. They only had to play two games. They defeated Cabot and they defeated Harbor. Of course, oddly enough, the storyline is that Conway is not here. We have to mention that at some point as Conway was upset by Central and then Northside took care of Central to make it into this game. Yeah, the whole landscape of 6A changed when Conway lost. It sent shockwaves literally throughout the state. I remember I was at Oakland and someone told me, did you hear about that? Look at Amari Williams crashing the glass again, but it was a it was surprising loss for Conway, ranked number one in the state all year long. And their only loss came outside the state of Texas. So many people, including myself, I'll raise my hand. I just thought we were going to see Conway and North Little Rock for a third time this season in the championship game. Free throw up and in for Amari Williams. Three points for Williams make it four, and they've all come at the free throw line. Full court press from North Little Rock. Commanding early lead, 11 to two, as we near four minutes to play in the first. Mentioned Zoe Brashears, five points a game, 3.7 rebounds a game, a freshman on the floor. Northside needs Relford to step up. That's their go-to player. She needs to help settle this team down. 13.7 a game, 6.9 rebounds a game. Sears gets it to Relaford. Four to shoot on the shot clock. They've got to hurry. Down to two. No. No shot. Good defense there for North Little Rock and a shot clock violation. Timeout on the floor. North Little Rock 11 to 2 over Northside. You are watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, Flashing Red, Kids Ahead. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up 
watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Want to watch the games again online? Subscribe to the Arkansas PBS YouTube channel and get notified when they're available. YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Arkansas PBS offers all the basketball games and more on demand starting next week. Again, YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Wes, you mentioned Relaford hasn't even taken a shot yet for Northside. North Little Rock leads 11 to 2, 335 to go in the first. Look at this, Northside's coming out in the zone. They're going to change things up a little bit and try to slow down North Little Rock offensively. Freeman works it over to Edwards. Edwards had, has had a lot of options from colleges recruiting her. That one goes in off the glass for Duckworth. Duckworth signed with Southern Illinois at Edwardsville. Averages 12 points a game, 35% from the three-point line. I don't know how many she's banked in, but that one looked just as sweet on the scoreboard. That helps the averages. 14 to 2, North Little Rock. Impressive start. Here is Relaford spinning through the lane and got it to go. Got to think during the timeout, the coaches, Ricky Smith, just really encouraged her to get to the basket. A steal for Northside. As all the way to the rim is Gooden. Ariana Gooden takes it all the way the other way and four straight points for Northside. They have a little bit of life all of a sudden. That'll get some momentum over there on that bench. All of a sudden, the Northside fans are up. They're cheering. They're yelling defense. They're trying to get behind their young ladies. Tate sends it into the corner. Three on its way. Just short and a rebound by Brashears. Great job by Brashears of boxing out Amari Williams. Sometimes when you go to a zone, it's hard to block out because you're playing an area. You're not so much guarding a person. And that time, as soon as the shot went up, Brashears went to Amari Williams, put a body on her, and kept her from getting the rebound. Brashears sends it right back to Gooden. Gooden has seven to shoot. They've already had one shot clock violation in this quarter and a foul right around the free throw line on Garen Freeman. Freeman's first for North Little Rock. Freeman gets after you, man. She can play some defense, and that's exactly what she was doing there. She was all over her defender. Look at the defense sliding her feet back and forth. Got her for a little bit of a reach in. First foul on North Little Rock. Northside's committed five. Freeman will knock that one out of bounds. Buzz guys there get all the action. <laughs> Went over to them instead of us. Freeman is constantly looking for the ball, looking for a steal. So Gooden again, solid numbers this year. Ten and ten points, five rebounds. Going to work it to Harris. Good pump fake and a drive off the glass and in for Asia Harris. Making a 6-0 run. North Little Rock needs to stop the bleeding. Wide open. Here's Jones. KJ Jones can't hit. A rebound for the Lady Bears. Coach calls KJ Jones his best shooter from behind the three-point line. She has signed with Mississippi Valley State, averaging about four points a game, 42% from the three-point line. So they're happy with that shot. She's wide open. She's going to knock down that shot more times than not. Relaford drives over to Gooden. Gooden shot won't fall. Williams, strong rebound on the outlet to Freeman. Inside a minute to go in the first. Slings the pass down to Edwards underneath and traveling violation the call. That time Amari had beaten the shoes down the court and she was trying to post up, but what had happened, North Little Rock on the break. It, got, it just got congested down there. And so when all of a sudden when the, the, the lady driving in sees that Amari coming, she's trying to get out of the way and move the feet. It just, it just kind of bad luck, honestly, because if she had kept driving in, she had a layup, but she was trying to get the ball to Amari too. Five first quarter turnovers for Northside. With Little Rock 14, Northside 8, winding down the first quarter. About an eight-second difference between the game and the shot clock. Relaford drives into the paint. We have contact. 
and a foul. That goes against Jemiah Brown. Relaford will go to the free throw line. Good aggressive move by Yanni. I like what she's trying to do now all of a sudden. She's she's putting her head down and getting to the basket and she's beating a defender and that's uh, a couple of times now she's been able to get a good look good shot to go to the free throw line. Missed both. Rebound by Williams. So with the shot clock turned off, North Little Rock will slow play this final possession. And a six-point lead. Freeman looks back to her coach. And coach Fimple sends the instructions. Stacking everybody to the right. Look inside, but Williams double teamed. Three seconds left, down to two. Shot off the side of the backboard and out of bounds. See if they add a little bit of time or not. Somewhere around point three, point four, maybe if they do add time. Officials are going to huddle up and try to figure out what happened. There's, the clock kept going once the ball landed out of bounds. A good second or two. There should be some more time, but I think they're trying to decide too who has possession. I believe you're right. Official over to the scorers table now. Right now they're saying North Little Rock. We're going to put well, it says seven seconds. Maybe they're adjusting it. Maybe they're trying to do point seven perhaps Wes. That would make a lot more sense. That'd be my vote because seven would not be accurate. Garen Freeman ready to inbound. Point seven. Here we go. Brashears back in on defense for this last point seven. Freeman to inbound. A lob to Williams stripped from him, and that's the end of the first quarter. North Little Rock 14, North Side 8 after one from Bank OZK Arena, the 6A girls title game. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Is now a session. Special thank you goes out to Catering Temptations of Hot Springs, 501-547-7094. Thank you for providing the food for our crew. We start the second quarter from Bank OZK Arena, North Little Rock with a 14-8 lead on Northside. Lady Bears start with the basketball. Northside finished that quarter on a 6-0 run. It was 14-2, and they're making it very interesting now. Relaford had it taken away by K.J. Jones. Players go spilling on the hardwood. They play on. Into the corner, looked like Desiree Vick was open. She's been a bit hesitant. Here she goes this time, just short. Vick has signed with Itawamba Community College. She averages seven points a game. Not a starter. That's how deep this North Little Rock team goes. You got girls coming on in off the bench, so they're getting their college paid for. That's a pretty deep team. Shot off the side of the backboard, a chase for it. North Little Rock ends up with it. High dribble there. North side wanted to travel, don't get the call. Freeman tried to dump it inside to Williams. Right past her out of bounds. Good pass, good look. Just a little too much on it, and Amari wasn't ready for it, but they could have connected. That would have been an easy basket for 32. 
Two regular season matchups between these two teams out of the 6A Central. They both went to North Little Rock. But the second time they played each other, January 21st, a two-point game, 60-58 to 58 in North Little Rock. That was a, a whale of a game. Yeah, I remember that first game and a lot of hype leading up to it. North Little Rock wins by two. And I thought, what's well, going to be very interesting for that second game when they go to Northside. Northside may be favored to win that game, but North Little Rock had a better victory in that game. They won that one by nine. Northside comes up with the rebound. Two players down. They'll press on anyways. Erica Gooden finds Asia Harris. Wide open. There's the three. Asia Harris, seven points in the early going. That's twice she's come up big. During this little run now for uh, Northside, 14 to 11. They've cut it to three. What they're doing is taking care of the ball a lot better, but they're, they're keeping North Little Rock from scoring. It's a bank shot from North Little Rock and not a whole lot since then. Here comes another three attempt, and that one rattles around and in for Jemiah Brown, her first points of the contest. North Little Rock just needed me to point out the fact that they hadn't been scoring except for a lucky bank shot. I guess so. They heard me talking, said, all right, we got you. 17 to 11, North Little Rock. Five and a half to go until halftime. Harris thought about it, traveled. Turnover on the Lady Bears. Got a little excited. She's hit a couple big baskets. She was feeling it. She's got those feet moving a little too fast for a brain. Ricky Smith leading the North Side Lady Bears. And the rest of his coaching staff, Scott Thompson and Randa Grant. How good is Ricky Smith? 750 wins. Wow. He's got 750. He's got 702 at Northside. Eight state titles, but 750 wins. Incredible. Here's another three. Same spot. Different result this time. Offensive rebound. Maybe hit across the upper. Shears a block in the paint. Northside, a little bit out of sorts here. Harris will fire. And a rebound back the other way for North Little Rock as Madison Hatley has checked into the game. And Coach Vimple was really high on Madison Hatley. She had seven rebounds in the semifinals. And he told me that, you know, everybody talks about points, but you need a player like Hatley who's going to go in and clean up the glass. Well, and another big thing about Hatley, it gives somebody for Amari to practice against. You know, Amari Williams is going to Vanderbilt, and a lot of times you go into practice, you don't have anybody pushing you. But Maddie Ice, he likes to call her Maddie Ice. He says, man, she's been battling her in practice every single day, and that only helps make Amari better. For Sears, will fire offline. I always like to ask players, who do you have to practice against? Because I like to give those guys a little credit, girls a little credit every once in a while, so it's fun when you hear that. Wide open, three on its way. This one rattles around and in again for Jemiah Brown. Her second three-point make, she has six. And North Little Rock has ballooned the lead back out to nine. Well, that's their zone buster, and that's why she's in there. A steal by Edwards. Edwards past Relaford, misses the layup, put back no. Three looks at the rim, and Brown now has eight. That's a hustle point. She could have easily just watched that play, figured, hey, we got two on one, we're going to score, I don't need to rush down the court. But she did. She gets the offensive rebound and the putback. She's rewarded for her hustle. Six steals now for North Little Rock. That's the difference right now as they've doubled up north side, looking to it. What a performance we're seeing from Tamaya Brown. She has 11. North Little Rock has their largest lead. We're back in a moment. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Join us this summer for Blueberry's Clubhouse. We'll see a whole new crop of friends for the very best adventures in Arkansas. That's phenomenal! Good work, friends! We did it! Blueberry's Clubhouse returns this summer, only on Arkansas PBS. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance Agent. Farm 
Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. We on that next level. We on that next level. Support the high school sports you love. Give to Arkansas PBS today by texting sports to 501-491-0444. 11 points from Jemiah Brown. She has ignited the North Little Rock Lady Charging Wildcats to an 11 one And they're going to get the basketball back. Chance to make it a 13 or a 14-0 run right here. Just a costly turnover, a careless turnover from... Fort Smith Northside. That's their fifth turnover of the quarter. Daryl Fimple and his team up 25 to 11. Inside four to play until halftime. Edwards on the drive. She's fouled. April Edwards will go to the free throw line for North Little Rock. Simple play right there. Mari Williams comes up to the high post, gives a good screen, uses the Williams screen, goes to the basket. Gets fouled in the process. If she would have missed and not been fouled, Amari Williams would have been there for the offensive rebound. I bet they've run that play a hundred times this year and just keep running it and running it until teams figure out how to stop it. I imagine so. Two fouls on Zoe Bershears. We've got a whistle and a foul on North Little Rock. Too aggressive there for Jemiah Brown. Brown's all pumped up after scoring all those points. She's got 11 points, four for five from the field, three for four from the three-point line. Coach called her his zone buster, and that's what she's been doing, knocking down those threes in this game. Relaford taking two players on the drive. She's hit, goes stumbling. Relaford will go to the free throw line for Northside. Just the third foul on North Little Rock in this entire first half. They have played a really clean first half of basketball. Five turnovers for North Little Rock. Relford, there she goes. She's got knocked down these free throws. She went to the line before and missed both of her free throws. Cuts it to 15. One of four for Relford from the free throw line. She has three points. Nearing three minutes to play in the second quarter. North Little Rock 27, north side 12. Edwards lobs inside to Williams, draws a double, maybe even a triple. And they'll kick it back out on the perimeter, looking for her again. Had her open, I think. She had her. Just couldn't get it to her. Still trying to find Edwards. There's the triple team again. Seven to shoot. Williams kicking it back out. A runner in the lane from Vic is offline. Northside's Relaford clears the glass. That's a good rebound. She went up and got that in traffic. Brought it down. Strong hands. Fought North Little Rock off. Big rebound. Northside needs a field goal now. Just that one point from Relaford. No field goals in the last 333. Relaford had her shot blocked by Edwards and a foul. She'll go the free throw line. That's that's seven fouls now. That's one and one. And a frustration foul from Northside there. It's on Ariana Gooden, her first. I thought North Little Rock did a good job of moving their feet here on the play. They stay in front of the defender, hands straight up, got all ball. Just a little bit of a collision right there, where she's trying to get back on defense quickly and ran into, uh, ran into the offensive player. But when you knock her down, you got to call something. If, if right. not, it's a travel. Got to call it one way or the other. One and one. Garen Freeman set to check in for North Little Rock here in a moment. Won't happen yet on the miss. And we've got a foul in the paint on a free throw. You don't see that too often. The referees are discussing. Brashear's talking to one of the officials too. Call it on north side. Both double them. foul. Okay. Honestly, it's, it was just two girls battling, trying to block out each other. I, I thought it maybe it's just a no call. Yeah. Well, I just think you let them play on. That's just trying to block out, being physical. There's no harm, no foul, really. 
So North Little Rock gets the basketball out of the double foul situation. Works to their advantage because the free throw was missed. Williams lost it. It is out of bounds off of Williams. Turnover on North Little Rock. Yeah, she went off of her foot. That time she caught it and went to make a quick move, but she, she just can't put it down on the ground. When you're getting triple team, no bounce. You just get it, turn, and shoot that little hook, turn, or just shoot it because you're taller than everybody else. But you got to go when they're bringing the double team. Shot clock didn't start. Officials will get that squared away. That's exactly what I was about to say. In fairness, when you have three players on you, kind of hard to dribble, kind of hard to shoot. And it can be frustrating. And I know she's probably frustrating because she's used to getting the ball and, and getting some easy baskets, some layups. And you, you look at the total number of shots for her. No shot. She hasn't shot the ball yet. When she shot it, she's been fouled, so and she didn't make it, so it doesn't go down as a shot. She's got four free throws, and that's it. You, if you told me she didn't have any baskets with a minute 50 to go in the first half, I said, uh-oh, Northside's going to be winning this game. Right. Well, the defense has just been stifling in the first half. Here's another example of it. It's going to stay with Northside, but they are causing all sorts of havoc out there on the Lady Bears. Edwards doing another fine job playing defense. Now that we're talking about it. I think maybe Fimple may have just gotten teed up. No, I don't I don't know. I didn't there, there was a lot of players blocking my view. Oh, on the player. They called it on uh, Edwards. See Edwards playing defense, turning, twisting, pretty good. She kind of reached in there, but she didn't feel like she was fouled because if you watch the offensive player, she throws a little elbow. Yanni th pushes her off, and she was wanting the offensive foul. She gets called for the defensive foul. Coach Fippa was wanting the offensive foul. Now, I don't know what happened with the uh, technical foul. But like you said, we were blocked. It must have been something Edwards was saying. Both free throws go for good, and Northside keeps the possession. Could be a little bit of a turn for them here to close the half. 145 to go. Down by 13. Brashear sends it over to Gooden. Looks to take on Freeman one on one. Past her, a travel though. That's how she got past her. Coach Smith cannot believe it. And now he's been issued a warning. warning. Referee's taking control here. I tell you what, they've let them play tonight. There have been a lot of um, iffy ball handling, I'll say, and a lot of feet shuffling, and they have they've let a lot of that go. And I think all of a sudden they're they're kind of tightening the screws a little bit. And some of the coaches and players got used to one way of the game being called. And now they're uh, trying to adjust. Still trying to work it inside to Williams if possible. Now on the drive is Duckworth. And the basket is good and one for Destiny Duckworth. And she did a little bit of a double take. I don't know if you saw that, Wes. She thought she was going to be called for the charge. I saw it. She looked at the, the uh, official real quick right here. Watch her when she goes in. She gets it now. Turn to the official. OK, I got the call. <laughs> and then a turn again. A double turn. <laughs> Duckworth. 12.2 points a game, 8.3 rebounds a game. When we were talking about players to watch, you got to go with Williams because of her stature out there. But Duckworth is an exceptional player as well. Oh, she's been playing on varsity since the ninth grade. A lot of experience for her. That was a walk. We'll let that one go. Rashears open. Won't take the long shot. We're inside a minute to go until the halftime break. Northside needs some points before the half. Good and working with 10 on the shot clock. Swings it over to Harris, who's had the hot hand in the first half. A rebound by Duckworth. North Little Rock on the move. They lead 30 to 14. Nobody stops Duckworth. A no blocking foul. Destiny Duckworth back to the free throw line. Northside may have gotten a little break there if they don't call the foul. Amari Williams was right there. She had the rebound in her hand. She was just going to lay it in for an easy two points. So Duckworth needs to knock these two free throws down. Duckworth looking to become the second North Little Rock player into double figures. That'll do it. She has 10. <laughs> 11 points from Jemiah Brown to lead all scorers. We've got subs here as Hatley comes back in. 
Jocelyn Tate returns as well for North Little Rock. Get Amari out. Don't want to get her to get a cheap foul here at the end of the half. Put in some more speed for defense here this last possession. One tenth of a second difference between our game and shot clock. Ariana Gooden slings it over to Cassidy War. She drives. War fouled. War will go to the free throw line. They didn't wait for the final shot like I thought they might. Well, when you're down 18, you need all the points you can get. And you need, if you get a good look, and that was a good look. She had a uh, free trip to the free throw line. Could have made the basket for an end one. So you got to be happy with the look. First point today for Cassidy War, averaging eight points a game, five rebounds a game. With the foul on Tate, her first. War did everything right except for shoot for her left hand. She came in on that left side, threw it up with her right hand. She drew the foul, and she's going to the free throw line. But if she throws it up with that left hand, she might have made it and had an and one. Neil War will come in. Ariana Gooden will take a seat for Northside. 24.3 to play. Northside had their one little run, but no field goals in the last 540 has allowed North Little Rock to double them up. North Little Rock has been consistently consistent on defense. Held Northside eight points in the first quarter, eight in the second quarter. Northside trying to trap. Somebody has to be open. Down to 13 seconds. Duckworth. Duckworth drives, floats it to the rim and in. 13 first half points. Three seconds left. Relaford half court. She launches and misses. North Little Rock finishing hot. 34 to 16. They put up 20 points in that second quarter. No field goals like you said in the last almost six minutes for Northside. They got a lot of work to do in the second half. At the halftime break, 34 to 16, North Little Rock. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I've got the vaccine for you. I need you to get it for me. So many people think that because I've had COVID-19 that I don't need to get uh, the vaccine. Experts and all agree that, you know, boosting your own uh, immunity with the vaccination uh, really confers the, the greatest level of protection. You should get the COVID vaccine because it's been proven to be safe, effective, and a powerful tool in our toolkit to stop this virus in its tracks. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Welcome back to Bank OZK Arena at halftime of the 6A girls state title game. North Little Rock dom uh, dominating the first half here over Fort Smith Northside 34 to 16. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore and Wes in this first half. Destiny Duckworth came on really strong in the second quarter. That was set up a lot by Jemiah Brown. Those were the two keys for North Little Rock in the first half. Yeah, how about that? Brown 11 points, Duckworth with 13 points. Uh, you have told me that uh, Amari Williams would have only four points, four free throws. She hasn't taken a shot from the field. I think, whoa, they must have got her in foul trouble or something if she doesn't have any sh shots from the field. But that just shows you how deep North Little Rock is. Williams with those four points. Edwards has five. That's that's all you're scoring. Freeman had a free throw. That That is that's it for North Little Rock. It has truly been Brown and Duckworth. I think Northside obviously has time to turn it around because of, as we talked about, legendary coach Ricky Smith, a team that won a state championship last year. They have the pedigree, but what do they have to do? Relaford's got to get going. Relaford has gone to the free throw line four times. She's made only one. She's one of two from the field, but you can just tell with the ball in her hands, she's able to get to the rim anytime she wants to. So she needs to keep on attacking. And if North Little Rock starts collapsing, then she can kick it out and Northside can try to knock down some threes. At halftime, North Little Rock with the lead 34 to 16 over Northside in our 6A Girls State Championship game. It's halftime. 
Stay with us. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. everyone here we are again it's our halftime show our third game of the day I'm Ed Leon and I'm Julie Thomas stay where you are because we've got some really neat stuff in store for you before we get back to the action Julie I've lived in a lot of places over the years but I gotta say Arkansas really shines in addition to the obvious beauty of the natural state the character of the people and what they create is just really special and we get to highlight that here on Arkansas PBS yes we do from the unique foodie culture here to the vibrant and inspirational music scene we work hard to tell the Arkansas stories no one else is telling here's an inspiring one from the Arkansas Delta about a group of high school students who sought to heal themselves and find equality in their community through their music Here's a look at our Emmy Award winning documentary, Rap Squad. We're in the Delta, and the Delta is a very unique and different kind of area. Sometimes in order to understand the Delta, you have to be from the Delta just to kind of understand the culture and the people. The only excitement that you can get is mischief and stuff like that. I've been depressed. I'm actually still depressed, but you see how I come to school and I smile. There's really no option for like the angsty young poet or like the angsty young artist or the angsty young rapper. Ooh, 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 ooh. The kids that are you know, spinning three 16 bar verses on a song won't write an essay in class. Well, then that shows a deeper issue. Maybe they have undealt with trauma. Maybe they're not being dealt with properly. This is our proposed new high school facility that will be constructed here uh, at the Central High School campus if the voters approve the property tax. What we see is an over-the-top proposal, an extreme tax on a poor community. What are we going to do to better our community? No adult, no no government, no nothing's gonna listen to me. Not unless I come out with a big statement. I don't wanna be that one that could have done something. I wanna be that one that did do something. We've neglected the public school system for over 30 years, and now it's coming back to haunt us. You wanna go for us? And the kids bought the philosophy that art can create change, that art can allow it more expression, that art can help people stand up for themselves. Don't nobody want to see us shine, but bet we gonna shine regardless. Such a great story. And in addition to an Emmy, Rap Squad also earned a National Public Media Award. Great recognition for a wonderful Arkansas story. And like all of our original local content, you can watch Rap Squad anytime on demand. Right, you can find our programs wherever you like to watch, on the PBS video app, on our website, or on our YouTube channel. YouTube TV subscribers can find us there too. And of course, the way you're watching us right now. It's so awesome, there are so many platforms and so much content. Some of our most popular shows are about Arkansas's unique food culture. Food historian and travel writer Kat Robinson has taken us on guided tours of the Arkansas Pike Trail and the tastiest dairy bars in the state. Here's a taste. What makes a dairy bar different from other food establishments? Here in Arkansas, it describes a whole selection of restaurants we love. It's a location that serves ice cream, burgers, or hot dogs, some having been in existence 50 years or more. Come travel with me on a culinary itinerary of Arkansas Dairy Bars. I'm Kat Robinson, and I preach the gospel of Arkansas food. No, really. What I've discovered is that Arkansas has a passion for pie. These are the stories of some of those pies, the people who make them, and the communities from which they hail. Hope you made room for pie. Thank you. Uh, 
So that looks really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been able to check out some of these stops that Kat recommends, and they do not disappoint. The films are Make Room for Pie and Dairy Bars, Neat Eats and Cool Treats, and you can watch them both on demand. It's how we bring to life the Arkansas experience. That's right. Our local productions, they're Arkansas stories, and we love telling them. But you know, we can't tell them without your help. We'd love for you to be part of what we're doing, to sign up and get exclusive sneak peeks at what's headed your way and share your thoughts on what you want more of. Yes, share your voice, add your voice to the conversation. Let's go to Marge Bentley over at the Arkansas PBS Foundation. She's gonna let you know how to do just that. Marge. Thank you, Ed. I know we're short on time, so real quick. All we're asking is that you take a moment and go to our website, myarpbs.org slash sign up. Give us your email address to join the conversation. And if you love what you're watching, text SPORTS to 501-491-0444 and donate $10 to help us bring you many, many more Arkansas stories. Ed and Julie. Thanks, March. Ed, I think we have time for one more clip. We do. Check out The Glow with Big Piff. It's our digital series that highlights diverse voices, artists, and entrepreneurs in Arkansas. Here's The Glow. What's going down, y'all? It's Big Piff, the hip-hop adventurer, and I'm excited to tell you about my series, The Glow. That there's so much greatness just in who you are, and that's what I try to live my day by. I get to talk to some inspiring creators and entrepreneurs, dig into their inspiration, and see how they let it shine to the world. That I found rhythm and it made sense to me. No, I remember the yeah, specific yeah. day I remember. <laughs> like, you remember? I remember like, the I'm day. I'm on beat now. The Glow. Tune in on Arkansas PBS. You can check out all six episodes of The Glow On Demand. All right, we are minutes away from the second half, so we are sending you back to Hot Springs for more championship action here on the home of the Arkansas High School Basketball State Finals, Arkansas PBS. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. And we're just about ready for the start of the second half between North Little Rock and Fort Smith Northside. At the break, 34 to 16, North Little Rock a commanding lead, nine of 22 from the floor. 5 of 14 for Northside. Turnovers, 11 first half turnovers for Northside and North Little Rock controlling the glass. They've out rebounded Northside 17 to 8. As you would expect, North Little Rock with an 18 point lead, they're dominating in all the categories. They shot better from the field, they shot better from the free throw line, they shot better from the three point line, they took care of the basketball, they've out rebounded Northside. So basically, in every category, North Little Rock has done better than Northside. That's where they got to turn it around. Number one thing they got to do, though, they got to start taking care of the basketball. Michael Westbrook along with Wes Moore. We're ready for the second half, and we'll see what Northside has in them for 16 more minutes as they try to turn this one around, trailing 34 to 16. The Lady Bears start with the basketball. And they will try to go to Relaford and get her involved. For Relaford, she had only three points in the first half. She came into the game averaging nearly 14. Asia Harris, a strong first half. Her three doesn't go. A rebound by Williams. It's a strong board by Williams. Fifth rebound for Williams. A quick shot back the other way and a rebound from Ariana Gooden. Thought possibly Bashir's had a chance to get that offensive rebound, but Mari Williams just went up, took it away from her. Just, you know what? That's why she's going to Vanderbilt. That's why she's an SEC player. And her sister, who was the tournament MVP last year, well, she plays at Oklahoma State now. That was Tracy Bershears. They beat Fayetteville by one point in double overtime. Relaford, not only was she a part of that game, she hit the game winner in double overtime for Northside. Relaford spinning strong to the rim and in. Good inbounds play. Get it into the corner. She just goes post up real quickly, catches it, spins, puts it in. Aaron Freeman runs the point. Coach calls her the little general. She's going to take the shot herself. Her shears will clear the glass for the rebound. A little impatient there. Coach isn't 
you know, disappoint, he's disappointed they took such a quick shot. You'd like to work it around a little bit, give it a look for Amari Williams inside. Now Harris tries to get around Freeman, lost it, recovers. Plenty of time to shoot. Drive down the baseline and a reach in foul will be called on Duckworth. She got her. She kind of had that smile on her face. She knew that she uh, she got caught reaching in. She was hoping she'd get all ball, but I think we could even hear the slap on the wrist from where we're sitting. That sends Ariana Gooden to the free throw line, and she's in foul trouble. She picked up three fouls in the first half. Your side needs their starting freshman guard on the floor. And she's logged a lot of minutes this year. They'll need her in the second half. Northside on a 4-0 run. Let's see what uh, Coach Fipple has his girls do here. Probably take a little more time than they have the last couple of possessions. They're moving quick. I think the problem you have with that shot, they can probably get it at any point in the possession. You don't need to do it after one pass. Edwards, nice move, and she's fouled. North Little Rock fans might have uh, on the top off this gym if that one had gone in. What a move. She went up in traffic, too. That's a foul on Relaford. That's uh, going to be her fourth. That is four, yeah. Dangerous territory now for the star for the Lady Bears. I think she's going to come out of the game. Harris Washington averaging five points, four rebounds a game. The 5'10 junior forward will enter. And Rel Relaford obviously disappointed as she slowly walks to the end of the bench. North Little Rock got what they wanted, drove to the basket, went to the free throw line, made their free throws. Harris finds Washington open, high arcing shot, but missed. Duckworth the rebound. 16 point North Little Rock lead, a little more than two minutes into the third. Otter. Williams inside, goes up, fouled. Did a great job that time. She posted up. I mean, her feet were on the circle underneath the basket. She established great post position. They threw it into her. She catches it. And you can see she doesn't even turn her full body to the basket. She jumped sideways and shot the ball sideways. The Shears had her hands straight up. The foul was on Harris, who hit her from behind. They'll teach Amari a, a little bit of a jump hook or a little shot where she can just kind of flip it in. Plus, you know, she doesn't have to do that right now. She's. Probably 95% of the time taller than whoever's guarding her. But when she gets to college, all the post players are pretty much 6'3", 6'4". So she's going to have to learn some kind of a baby hook, some kind of hook shot, jump hook, something to add to her weapon. Duckworth takes her defender on the drive, gets all the way to the rim, and she is putting together quite the day. 15 points for Destiny Duckworth. She has been impressive all game long, but these last two drives, she's just been able to go to the basket. Edwards will come over, picks up the foul as Gooden got to the rim. North Little Rock not content with a 19 point lead, still full court pressing, putting the pressure on North Little Rock in this one, or on uh, North Side. It's a great look there. Got her with the body, got her with the hand. Right foul, but that was a strong move, physical. She knew she was going to draw some contact. She went up strong with it. Didn't get it to fall, but she's going to go to the free throw line. And Gooden's first miss at the free throw line. She was five for five before that one. Puts it back in, however, and will get two instead of a one. I think that's the first time I've seen Amari get her hands on the ball and not bring it in. Her hands are so good. She's so strong. Normally, she gets her hands on it. She's going to get it. Good look down low. There sure is. Duckworth missed. And it's out of bounds. That'll be Northside basketball. Thought she was going to go to the free throw line. Looked like there was some contact when she jumped up. I think Coach just got a warning. I think he thought she was fouled, too. These coaches will get after it. They're going to coach. They're going to work the referees. They've been around a long time. Got a foul before they got the ball across half court. Desiree Vick. Vick picks up her second personal foul. Third team foul against North Little Rock in the quarter. 
Gooden working on Vic. Takes her to the rim. The basket and one coming for Ariana Gooden. Gooden now has 11 points. Three fouls on Vic. Have to get back to moving their feet, staying in front of Northside. Northside is pretty clear what their goal is. They're going to drive to the basket every possession. North Little Rock just has to stay in front of them, establish themselves. Maybe get that charge called. Edwards was open. Extra pass. Now the Duckworth. Duckworth shot misses short. 6-0 run here for Northside. They look to add to it. Down by 13. Gooden started to take over a bit. 12 points. Leaves it to War. She'll pull up. And the 13 footer or so doesn't go. Edwards with it for North Little Rock. Stutters, drives, basket. Just a heads up play from Edwards. Give him that little hesitation. Defense relaxed, put her head down, drives in the left side of the basket, gets the layup to go. Coach Fimple's over there squatting down, pounding the court. He's pleading with his team to play defense. He wants to stop right here. You know, I was reading one of the recaps from the semifinals, and it started out with Coach Fimple is stomping his feet. <laughs> Still. <laughs> I think that's his move. Long shot and a long rebound tracked down by North Little Rock's Jemiah Brown. Jemiah Brown, strong first half, 11 points. See if she makes an impact now that she's back in. Shot on its way and just missed off the front of the rim from Brown. North Little Rock's backing into their man-to-man. -man. They were trying to figure out who was guarding who. I think they got it all figured out now. Washington circles around. Brashear shooting NBA range three. Missed. Long distance there. Not heard a whole lot from Brashears. 0 of 3 from the floor. North Little Rock starting to slow it down a little bit here. Look inside to Williams. Not there. Duckworth wide open. There she is. Now inside to Williams. Straightens up. Finds Edwards. Short jumper. Doesn't get the roll. Edwards gets the rebound among four north side players. A fresh shot clock for North Little Rock. We talked a lot about the eight titles of Northside, and we should, but four titles in the last 12 years for North Little Rock. Let's not forget about that. Coach Fickle's a heck of a coach, too. And it's two great minds going at it right here. Duckworth's 15 footer doesn't fall. Brashear's the rebound. Good luck. Just missed the shot. These two teams played each other in last year's state semifinals. Obviously, Familiar with each other in 6A. Northside was 8 and 6. North Little Rock was 12 and 2 in 6A Central play. Washington to the rim, got the rolling in. And a timeout. With 1.35 to play in the third, North Little Rock 41, Northside 28. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Get your live action photos from the game at myarpbs.org slash photos. Grab a free download, have prints made, these are great championship keepsakes. There's the website. Get your photos. North Little Rock shooting 35% for the game, but the difference 45% from behind the arc. 
They've knocked down some key threes in this game, five of 11 from the three-point line, but Northside's gone on a little bit of a run, and that's happened with Yanni Relaford sitting on the bench. That's what's been impressive to me. She's on the bench with four fouls as we start this uh, out of the media timeout inside the third here, late in the third, and it's 41-28. Northside gets a steal, so Cassidy War will bring it up. And yeah, so we've seen a lot more of Gooden. We've seen Washington score just a moment ago. An offensive foul away from the basketball will wipe out the Lady Bears' possession. The guy down the Bashirs, she uh, put a shoulder down and illegal screen. They were looking for that. She's picked up her third. One minute to play in the third. Look inside to Williams. Here comes the double team. And there's what you're talking about, Wes. A pump fake, a hook back the other way, something, and don't just immediately go up. Williams just got in trouble. Yep. She was, And she was off balance also, and she wasn't able to jump. That's just what happens when you get too big of a hurry, a little frustration building in. Pull up jumper, good. That's Ariana Gooden knocking it down, now with 14. 11 point game. Drought continues for North Little Rock. We're going on three and a half minutes. They haven't scored. 11 point lead. Northside's outscored North Little Rock by seven in this half. Edwards finds Brown wide open, cannot connect. This here's the rebound. Shot clock turned off. 20 seconds left in the third. And Northside has a chance to make it single digits going into the fourth. We're down to 10 seconds. Harris with seven, shovels it over to Gooden. She has four. She finds War, long three, air ball out of bounds. And that is the end of the third quarter from Bank OZK Arena, the 6A girls state title game. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, Flashing Red, Kids Ahead. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Don't go anywhere after the game. Join us for the Arkansas PBS postgame show with Steve Sullivan for an inside look at the folks who call the action, the motivational journey of Nicholas Watson, and a look at the Arkansas PBS All-Stars in the 5A and 6A divisions. I used to work at Arkansas High where Nicholas Watson played basketball. He is a superstar now at Harding University, so you don't want to miss that. We start the fourth year, North Little Rock 41, North Side 30. We got the shot clock now. You can't stall too long these days. Duckworth over to Edwards, down to 10 to shoot. Freeman driving into the paint, call for a travel. Don't think the North Little Rock fans like that one. I can hear the booing. <laughs> I thought it was a Euro step, kind of a big hop. But Foul or the travel was called. North Little Rock with the turnover to start the fourth quarter. Harris with seven points. All of that coming in the first half. Rashears fouled up high. Is that against Edwards? Yep. Well, Edwards picked up a technical foul earlier. She was not happy with that one. That's her third. Yeah, she just ran right through the screen. You can see Shear coming around Bashirs and just kind of bumped her. 
I thought it was pretty light contact to stop play, but they may be sending a message that this game's getting a little too physical. Let's clean it up. Johnny Relliford back in here to start the fourth quarter, playing with four fouls. Harris into the paint. How about that move from Asia Harris? Northside's gotten back into this game doing exactly that, just driving to the basket. North Little Rocks got to get doing to the same thing. Northside now shooting 41% for the game. They've outshot North Little Rock. Three from the baseline. That is good for April Edwards. She now has 12. That's a big shot. Write that down. It's 41 32. It's down to single digits. She knocks down the three. Offensive foul. Edwards receiving some interest from Little Rock and Louisiana Tech and several other really good programs from this region. We talked about how deep Coach Fimple's team is. Coach Fimple told us she's a big time competitor. Well, what happens when things are getting tight? Your competitors step up. They're not afraid of the moment. She wasn't afraid of the moment. Knocked down that baseline three. Williams skip pass over to Duckworth. Jump stop on the baseline, high off the glass. Edwards offensive board. And she slapped across the arm. She's heading to the free throw line. I think we're going to get Brashears on that one. She was swatting away. She did it on the offensive rebound to make sure North Little Rock didn't get it cleanly. She knocked it out front, came back to North Little Rock, and they worked it inside, and those hands were flying again. Slapped her across the wrist. Four fouls on Brashears. The second player with four fouls for Northside. With Little Rock, Vic and Edwards both have three. They're the only ones. One of two for Edwards, 13 points. The 4 0 run gives North Little Rock some breathing room, kind of slows down the momentum of Northside. Relliford over to Gooden. Gooden had 17 points in the win over Central. Her shot doesn't connect there. Offensive rebound. Shears has got to hustle back down the court. She was already at half court to go play defense. There's one of those hustle plays for Northside. Who wants the ball a little bit more? Gooden stepping through on Freeman with the rolling in. Ariana Gooden, 16 points. Still an 11 point North Little Rock lead as we near five minutes to play in the fourth in our 6A girls title game. They take their time. Clock is their friend. Hey, it's a double header for North Little Rock at the boys game coming up next. So this place is starting to fill up. Hit across the arm. Williams will go to the free throw line. Harris is saying, I don't know if I'm even tall enough to be able to get up to her to co commit that foul. Can't even reach her. <laughs> Harris picks up her second. Good looking stroke. You see the rotation on that ball. The replay on the foul. Six points for Amari Williams. Duckworth leads the way with 15, and Edwards has 13. Those are your three leading scores for North Little Rock. When you factor in Williams is seven points. Well, Gooden certainly has had the ball in her hands a lot here, trying to make something happen, but a turnover. Just a second turnover this half for Northside. Struggled with that early in the first quarter. They were able to rein it in a little bit. I think we had a shot clock reset on us. It's not a full possession a moment ago. The ball was just knocked away. The clock will stop for a minute here. 4.38 to play. And Karis Washington jumps off the bench for Northside to check back in as well if they'll let her in. They will. Brashears with her four fouls will take a seat. One of the big reasons why Northside got back into this game, they started taking care of the basketball. They were driving to the basket, getting easy looks at it or going to the free throw line. Oh, 
Edwards had it knocked free. Duckworth recovers it. A one-handed runner would not go. Offensive board. Williams, she misses the putback. And it's out of bounds. North Little Rock basketball. Williams is snake bitten. She still hasn't made a basket tonight. She's made some free throws, but 0 for 2 from the field. Came into the game averaging 15 points a game. 11 offensive rebounds for North Little Rock. We've talked about that being one of the keys in the first half. Edwards tries to take her defender one on one off the glass. This time Williams gets it and puts it back in for a first field goal. She's thinking finally, halfway through the fourth quarter, I finally got one to go. Washington out to Harris. Watches, cannot hit. And how about that rebound from Duckworth? Just took it away. I think three different girls had their hands on that ball. And I was convinced Northside was going to spin out of there with it, but Duckworth came out of there with it. Strong board. 346 to play, 49 to 34. North Little Rock with a 15-point lead. We're back in a moment for the conclusion. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. For a copy of any of the state championship games, go to MMProductions.net to place your order. MMProductions.net. 346 to play in the fourth, 49 to 34. North Little Rock with a 15 point lead on North Side. There's been a few moments in this game, Wes, where Northside, you thought, okay, they're right here in this thing. As you mentioned, they were had it single digits and a big three from North Little Rock. But really, the game's been controlled by North Little Rock throughout. Yeah, it was 41-32. Got it down to a nine-point game, and April Edwards, the color peasy, knocks down the three. And I just felt like that was a huge momentum shifter. It's almost like North Little Rock was able to breathe, to relax a little bit. And you look at that, since that moment, they're on a 10 to two run. And running out of time. Good. Works on Vic, steps past her. Missed the shot and a strong rebound from Freeman. And here comes another 30 seconds off the clock. You, na you nailed that. That was a big rebound, strong rebound from probably the smallest player on the court. She went up and got that. And controlled it. Now they work it into Amari. They collapse outside three. Duckworth can't hit. Almost an offensive rebound by Vic, but pulled away by Northside. Out in front to Washington. Duckworth will let her go. And a timeout from Northside. I bet earlier in the game, Duckworth would have challenged that, would have been probably called for the foul, but I think these teams have now learned they're calling it a lot closer uh, here down the stretch, especially in the second half. And so she just backed off of her and let her go. She didn't want to pick up the foul or the possibility of getting an and one. Absolutely right. Two is better than three in that situation for her on defense. So 51-36 with exactly three minutes to play in the 6A state title game. 41% shooting for Northside, 33% for North Little Rock. But again, six of 14 from downtown, only one of 12 from Northside. And don't forget, we mentioned it a moment ago, it's a double header tonight for North Little Rock as Bentonville and North Little Rock match up in the 6A boys final. That's all the North Little Rock boys. They were in the stands watching the first half. They just went and got their picture made, they're dressed and ready to go. There were fans lined up outside at four o'clock when I got here to get in. 
Nice pass underneath. Williams got the basket. Looked like she might miss for a second. Such a, a, a great benefit to have someone that big, that tall, with that size, the length. You get in a little trouble, you can just throw it up towards the rim, and Amari's going to go get it. Cassidy War with Vic right there in front of her, leaves it for Washington. With Little Rocks, Edwards falls down. They get the basketball anyways. And Vic circles the wagons and will put it right back out near half court to Freeman as we're nearing two minutes to play in the fourth. Smart team, they pulled it out. It helped that Coach Fimple was right there where they were standing. Now underneath to Williams, she's starting to take over in the paint, heading back to the free throw line. Foul on Camille War, her first. That's one of those moves. She's going to get stronger in college. She's going to be able to finish that. She didn't go up strong enough with the contact coming. And when that contact came, it kind of knocked her off balance. But the older, the more mature she gets, she'll go up strong and she's going to finish that play. She just, she's got nice shoulders that can take and, and, and absorb that contact. Uh, I think Amari's going to have success at Vanderbilt. And the free throws for Williams. That would make any coach want to recruit you. She's only missed one, nine of ten now. That's uh, 90%. That's good math Thank right you. there. <laughs> Two minutes to go in the fourth. A 19-point lead. Shot will not go for Gooden. Her putback misses as well. Williams comes away with the rebound. And for Williams, eight boards to go with 13 points. Feel like it's been a quiet night for her. And then right. all of a you look up and she's got the chance to have a double double. Duckworth close as well, 15 and 9. Like the shot clock maybe needs to be lowered. Let's see if that's the case. Yep. Took four seconds off of it. Inbounds to Gooden, swings it over to Washington. Ever Shears open. Washington will keep it. Rolls it in. Good little scoop move. Spinning over her left shoulder. Throws it up. Been hard to block that shot. You know what? Hanging in there though. I was looking back at some numbers from last year. Jersey Wolfenberger, who was a McDonald's All-American for Northside, she had a dismal game in that championship, and yet Northside still won it. She couldn't hit anything from the floor, one of 15 at one point. You kind of look at Williams in the same regard, the, the key player for North Little Rock this year. Now the numbers are starting to add up for her, but really just not hitting from the floor, and yet here her team is still up by double digits and a huge commanding lead with 142 to go. So that's why they play as a team, right? It's not always about one player. Well, we said Brown was the one that got him going with her three. She came in, hit three threes, and just gave the whole team a boost. Then Duckworth took over for a while. Edwards is up to 13 points now. And then here late, Amari Williams is adding to her total. So it's been a total team effort tonight. Let's see if Northside fouls or not. I don't think they will. Down to 1.30 to play. Certainly pressuring the ball handlers quite a bit. Freeman back out near half court. 15 on the shot clock. Freeman off of a screen into the paint at her shot blocked by Bershears. It is Northside basketball. Not a bad possession. Ran off a lot of clock. Got to look at it. Ball goes out of bounds, so you can set up your defense. You didn't turn it over, didn't give him a fast break attempt. War works on Freeman, pull up eight footer, no good. Rebound Duckworth, one minute to play. North Little Rock, 55, North Side 38, and the 6A championship game, and the crowd has come to life. A three is good, and there's the exclamation point. Desiree Vick, her first basket of the contest. She pulled the trigger. They were celebrating on the bench after uh, they got the ball across midcourt and didn't look like Northside was going to foul and they were going to hold up. So coach was given a high five and she pulls that three and then the bench erupted. Shot clock turned out off. 
North Little Rock will be allowed to run out the final 20 seconds. 58-38. A huge student section on end, and you know they're ready for the next one as well. Duckworth will shoot. She scores. <laughs> Coach Fibble's looking at her. What are you doing? We're running out the clock. Three, two, one. The final shot. North Little Rock 60, Northside 38. The Lady Charging Wildcats are 6A state champions. Probably didn't need that last shot, but got it anyways. 60 to 38, North Little Rock. The kids, they get excited. A lot of emotions going through you. Got the ball in your hand. Let's go score. Now the presentation of the trophies, and we'll talk to the MVP and, of course, head coach as well. That's still to come. Kind of turned out to be a bit of a runaway victory here, Wes. Yeah, 22 point victory for North Little Rock, but once again, we go back. It was a nine point game, and April Edwards hits the three, makes it 41 32. Or 44 32. The score was 41 32. Goes from 9 to 12. Northside had the momentum. That was the big thing that stopped that rally. North, North Little Rock was going through a stretch where they weren't getting anything going offensively. They seemed to be struggling. They couldn't get it inside to Amari Williams. They weren't knocking down outside shots. They tried driving to the basket. They weren't getting those shots to foul. It was just becoming a struggle to score for North Little Rock. And then all of a sudden, Northside catches fire and they're back in it. You know, at the half, North Little Rock had a, a pretty nice lead, 34 to 16. They're up 18, right? Well, all of a sudden, you look up, Northside's cut it to nine. So they'd cut an 18-point lead to nine. They had all the momentum and the shot of the game. I'll, I'll keep saying that that was April Edwards. It just changed the entire feeling of this game. Outscored by seven in the third quarter and then outscored their opponent by 11 in the fourth for the victory, 62-38. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Meandering through the southern half of Arkansas, Bayou Bartholomew holds the distinction of being the longest bayou in the world. Consumer DNA testing used by millions, but the results can be life-changing. From outwitting rattlesnakes to aerial feats, cast of cheeky characters will reveal the secret to Squirrel's success. Only on Arkansas PBS. Welcome back to Bank OZK Arena as North Little Rock hoists the championship trophy. They defeat Fort Smith Northside 60 to 38. It's all smiles for the blue and gold right now. The banners coming out, the trophies up in the air. They're taking the picture right now. Soon we'll have some of the North Little Rock lady charge them all cats over here with us and Coach Fimple. I think they're announcing the tournament MVP now. Amari Williams named the tournament MVP as she finishes with 13 points, nine of 10 at the free throw line, eight rebounds, played 30 minutes in this one. She did her job. They worked that offense around her so much, they'll try to throw it into her. She was double teamed. She was triple teamed. She wasn't able to get off of the shot out. But you know what? They kept working the offense. She would get it to her teammates. And she kept battling on the boards, trying to get offensive rebounds and putbacks. It was certainly a frustrating night at times for her. But in the end, that fourth quarter, she came alive. And that's what kind of pushed North Little Rock over the top. And her teammates helped her out early. North Little Rock has four players finish in double figures as Destiny Duckworth led the way with 17. Edwards had 13 and Brown had 11 and here we are getting the chance to visit with Amari Williams the game's tournament MVP as you finish with 13 points and eight rebounds a little bit of tough sledding for you early on but late your team went to the player that you are and you made them pay down in the paint and at the free throw line how are you feeling right now. It took us a while to get here, but I'm so glad that we finished the job. We we had the plan, we got the platform, and we finished. So 
I'm just proud of us as a whole collective. Was it a frustrating night? Because you were getting double teamed, you were getting triple teamed. I looked one time, I think in the third quarter, you were 0 for 2. Now, you were knocking down your free throws, but you just weren't getting the easy baskets I'm sure you're used to. Was it frustrating? It was very frustrating, but I'm kind of used to it in a way of getting doubled and triple teamed these past four years, even in middle school. So it's like I just take it and adjust to it and I do what I can, and that's what I did tonight. Your teammates early on, I know you want to give them some accolades and some praise because this was a really a total team effort. I couldn't do it without my teammates, honestly. Those are my backbone. They've held me down these past two years like in ways they don't even know. So it's like I owe them everything. That's why I, I kept going. I keep pushing through just for my teammates. So. You had an 18-point lead at the half. Northside cut it to nine. April Edwards hit a three. It just seemed to change the entire game. How big was that three-pointer? It was very big. It was very detrimental to the game because if we didn't have a score during that time, I felt like we would have kept going in our lull and it would have been a different outcome or maybe a harder outcome than expected. So, yeah. Any better way to finish the season? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> You're going to Vanderbilt. That's yes, the next big thing for yes, you. You're going to go on. And how does it feel to win a state championship and then go into your college career? It feels great. It feels like I left my legacy. I left something here, and now I'm starting a new chapter. So it feels great. Congratulations. Congratulations on being tournament MVP. <laughs> Thank you. Great game. Amari Williams, our tournament MVP. We're going to visit with Coach Fimple coming up in just a moment. So that's coming up in just a second. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And again, West, 13 points from Edwards, 17 from Duckworth, 13 from Williams. Brown has 11. Everybody just did a little bit here. And as a result, a double-digit 22-point state championship win. All right, we'll take uh, Here comes Coach Fimple right now. We'll hold on from taking that break. Coach, jump on in here. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Oh, you, know you told it. us earlier in the week, uh, even though number one Conway was knocked off, you're number two all week. You didn't consider yourselves to be the favorite because of a Ricky Smith team, coach team, oh, and gosh, how tough yeah. this is. I, and you know what? That's a hats off. I mean, you go to against a Hall of Fame guy. That's that actually we built our program to mirror theirs. So, uh, you know, I grew up in the same area that he, uh, Ricky did, and and we coached for Coach Foley. To, you know, that's about the same time. So uh, our links are, are quite a few. That's why I think our teams look like each other. Coach Amari Williams, let's talk about her for just a second, tournament MVP. She makes me a really good coach. Uh, that's the first thing. But she's just an outstanding kid. She's so unselfish to a point where sometimes you got to kind of, you know, kick the tires on her a little bit. Uh, but she just is so uh, dynamic, and it was so big to get her here. You know, she's been a freshman and played up, and uh, this was the scene that I, I kept promising them, hey, stay together, and we'll get you here, and she got us here. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Coach Daryl Good job. Our final score is 60 to 38. North Little Rock defeats Northside in the state championship game. For Wes Moore, I'm Michael Westbrook. Thanks so much for watching. You've been watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.